Chairman. Morning, everyone. I hope you're all uh, recovering from your energetic days and nights in <coughs> the last, uh, last couple of days. I know, I certainly am. Can everybody see that okay? Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So, uh, I just wanted to get back to basics, like I always like to do in these presentations, where I sort of pick up on a creative subject where we can sort of just simplify it right down so we can just understand, you know, what. Why, why we're doing what we are and, and how we do it. So uh, I took the liberty of um, integrating with one of Peter's thoughts, which was how can young creatives and uh, older creatives sort of work better together. And uh, I took a further liberty to phrase the title Babies to Boardies. As you can see, I'm the creative director. I'm almost fully bored. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. So yes, it's really about lessons for creatives, young and old alike. Okay? So, hands up all the young creatives in the room. <laughs> okay, how many have we got? Well, yeah. Okay. And the car. What about the old ones? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I remember when I was a young creative, and hopefully uh, you'll, you'll all have uh, uh, part of your brain that will be able to remind you of when you first, you know, come into the business as, a, as an art director in this case, or perhaps a designer, and we can all remember it. It was just like that, wasn't it? You know, there we were, you know, rocking back, <laughs> thinking about all the designs and the layouts that we were going to do, you know, quite simply. This doodling's a dream. I remember it quite well. I like to think of it like that too. You know? <laughs> and of course, all you uh, copywriters and texters out there, as they're called, I believe, in, on the continent, we can all remember our first, you know, letter or, you know, sanitation that we wrote. To, I wondered lonely as a call to action. Can you remember doing that one for the first time? So there we are. We've got, you know, our, there's our. Our young creative team, or you know, from your own memory, your own personal uh, um, sort of recollection of that, and uh, you sat down with your copywriter or your designer, and uh, you know, you've got really excited about the project, and you've got all these lovely ideas and all these things that you've learnt, you know, at college and university, and uh, you now have to go to the, for the very first time and go to present to your executive creative director. <laughs> You'd like to think that it, you know, it shouldn't have to be that way. I think there's a better way that you know the younger creatives in the business, for the people that have got agencies big enough to be able to manage them, and for the creative directors that are amongst us, I think there's a, a better bridge that we can build so that we can actually you know make the best of what we can actually do. So I thought some very simple lessons for the babies. And the first one is really important. If you can remember far back when you were at university or college and you got your first job, it's a big reality check. You know, the first, you know you've been sort of dusting around in your student gigs and uh, you know, perhaps living at home with mum and dad and she's been bring you they've been bring you breakfast in bed and all those things and washing. And all of a sudden you're at work. <laughs> Smell the coffee, you're at work, you know. Things have changed, you know. All of a sudden, you're on the payroll. You know, you've got deadlines to meet. There's paperwork and filings to sort out. And there's products to sell, you know. It's, you know, it's not a game anymore. This is for real, you know. Your, your contribution goes on the bottom line. And I think it's uh, really important for young creatives to really understand this because the sooner they do, the, the sooner they become more experienced, you know, and they start to meet, you know, the other creatives that are surrounding them. They take on a, a more sort of uh, professional acting. So I think this is a really important point. You just have to have a sense of reality. <laughs> and 
Another thought, um, a lesson I'd like to sort of share with you is, let's, let's, let's just take the light bulb, you know, they're, they're so much ubiquitous, they're all around us. You know, when does he, you know, purge his cycle, you know, how many does he need, when does he need to refresh it? So you, as a young creative, you need to really understand what it's like to be a customer. You know, you've got to wear those customer shoes, you know, one minute you're selling light bulbs, the next you're selling financial products, or a lottery scheme, or a pension fund, or a car. So you really have to understand quite quickly what, what the brief is about and what your contribution is going to be. The second thing is you need to think like a client. You know, again, you're, you're in work now. So it's really about, you know, what are the clients that you see? You know, he has business objectives, he has units to sell, you know, he has brand issues that need to be dealt with. So these things you have to quickly, you know, really take on board as well. And be responsible, uh, be an advocate for that client. But of course, finally, you need to be creative. That's your job. And, you know, laying out the light bulbs in a sort of creative way is just a simple metaphor for that, that point. You know, you need to feel like the customer, think like the client, but ultimately you've got to deliver it as creatively as you can. But you can't just do it purely creatively without thinking about the other two. We're in commerce, and that's you know, a really big point. <coughs> Another thing I think that often affects the younger creatives is, you know, it's quite daunting going into business. You've got, uh, you know, all you feel a little bit compromised. But, and especially in the creative department, you know, it's quite a sort of headstrong uh, department, potentially. And often for young creatives, it's a little bit foreboding. And I would say this, don't be shy. You know, your ideas are as important and as good as anyone else's. You know, that's why you're there. That's why we've recruited you. But of course, it's a skill. Some young creatives are good. They're very confident. They're very outright. But a lot, a lot of people from my experience, they just quite have to sit at their desk, keep their head down, and keep quiet. But what I'd say of you, when you're talking to young creators, is to really, you know, try and bring it out, bring stuff out from them, you know, so that they really engage, because it's very easy for them to just sit in the corner and just let others, you know, carry them. So don't be shy. As young creators, you know, really, you know, get involved. But there's a little catch, because in becoming confident, and really sort of flexing the muscles, there's a danger, particularly when you're selling your ideas, about getting a little bit precious when Mr. Creative Director there says, over my dead body, or, you know, a little bit not quite sure. You know, the young creative can find sometimes that they sort of dig their heels in and want to really, um, you know, fight over a concept soon for now. And sometimes it's appropriate, but often for young creatives, it's because of their lack of experience, they'll find that, you know, they're, they're pursuing a, you know, flogging a dead horse, as we say. So I think the thing about your creatives, for those that are here, and I know it's not that many, you mustn't be shy. You, your ideas are valid. They're, they're as, as good as anyone else's. But at the same time, you know, if you do get a sense of rejection, or, you know, it's not on brief or whatever, then humbly accept it and get on and crack on with some more ideas. You know, you can't flog a dead horse because you know, you're just, you'll end up going around the circle. So, I did horse with the boss. Hey, boss. <laughs> 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 One of the things that um, creative, young creators do so they'll, they'll get some really great concepts, they've got a lot of choice and a lot of variety, but often through lack of experience and the desire to really want to, you know, showcase their thinking, they'll often layer it far too stacked, you know. The real idea is down here and they're up here with it. So I'd say to young creatives, you know, keep it simple. We say, you've probably heard the acronym KISS, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Now, just strip it back to the point where it absolutely is just right. Now, often that's hard. You do need a creative director, or you need your account management colleagues, or your other creative to sort of pick that off and you know, check in with that. But the, the thing really, and it's, it's true for all creatives, 
where do you, you've got to try and find that point where it's just right, it's on that tipping balance. You don't want to stack it up too much, too many complexities. You've got to pull it down. So keep it simple is really important. Another thing that happens with uh, young creatives is, you know, now they've had quite a sort of, uh, you know, they've been when they go to work, they get sort of consumed in the day to day and, you know, the nine to five and they get tired. And they sometimes a little bit drops off of staying culturally in touch. And what I mean by that is, you know, art galleries, you know, current affairs, fashion the zeitgeist, you know, all those sort of things need to still be uh, searched for, looked into, investigated, because that's what's going to feed the actual creative ideas, you know, as you're going forward. And sort of, we tend, as older creators, we tend to sort of look for the younger creators to deliver that, because they have a bit more energy for it, and they can sort of pick up on stuff. So uh, I'd say, young creatives, you know, you're at work now, but don't forget, the skill you have, which is to have this big spongy head soaking all these ideas in and just keeping them, storing them for that, you know, that, that brief that's going to come up. I think another thing that um, you really notice in a sort of media, and even a small agency, I'd say, is when if you're a young creative and you come in, then you can really make your you know, we're not necessarily saying job around the office or the youth cycle. I'm thinking more like, you know, are you really good at long copy? If you are, you know, really work with it. Is your skill, you know, are you in, uh, absolutely in love with typography, you know, if you're an art director or designer? Or what about you really want to uh, feel passionate about the client's brand, so therefore, you know, the tone of voice guidelines and writing in a particular style are absolutely what, you know, is passionate to you. Find your USP, what you're good at, and make it yours. So that, you know, you start to bed in this sort of uh, essence for you creatively. So that when you're working with people, people start to think of you and your name and say, let's get XYZ to do that, because he's really good at that. So you start to make yourself more valuable than just, potentially, for an employer, being, uh, you know, a cheaper form of creative employment. We want, we want more than that. Okay. So we talked about uh, our younger creative friends. What about this, us old ones? Who are they again? Rory? Me? Oh, thank you. Okay. Show us a few people hiding now. So, you know, we're the guys and girls that have got to actually get the best of them. Our younger creatives, you know, it's, it's, it's still, it, we could be an accountancy, we could be a manufacturer, we have a managerial role to play here. We can't just swan in in a white ivory tower and sort of, you know, lock the door and just swan out again. You know, we have a responsibility to, to actually, you know, we're, we're, we're a business, so we have to manage our staff well. Now, I've, I've, this is a good example of uh, the interdirect, interdirect network. There's almost a sub-lesson here, and that's that uh, uh, always leave enough time for your own work. You know. Because, uh, you know, as you know, we were all busy yesterday. But never mind. Because I think, um, as you saw from the, the picture of the creative director that we showed you earlier, there's a sort of myth with creative directors, you know, mainly set from the sort of 70s and above the line, that they've got this sort of, as I say, they swan in and they sit in a desk and they shut the door and they make lots of orders and they go to Cannes for the festival. You know, they drive a nice car. You know, that's, they might be creative, but is that the best way of getting, working with other creatives, particularly younger ones? You know, you don't want to be that monster. You want to be the mentor, the person that is nurturing those creatives, you know, getting the best from them, getting the best ideas, you know, really pushing them, but not just sending them away with a flea in their ear. It's got to be more than that. So, you know, I like to try and work from those principles and I think generally a lot of people do but you know we've got to burst this myth of creatives of these grand people that swan around you know that is over now you know we're in a new new age of creative directors so don't be a be a be a mentor not a monster okay so we've got uh, 
so sort of these, a lot of these are connected now because obviously, you know, the back. So the best way of doing that is to is to prove your work. You know, show what you can do. You know, if the creatives are struggling, you know, you take over the reins. You you draw the visuals. You know, you help out. You write the copy. You write the scripts. You know, it's really important that you keep your skill level up so that you know you're still gainfully employable. We're in a downturn recession. You know. Um, if, if you've got hot young creatives, however embedded you are as a business, you know, you can easily be switched off. So you need to keep in. And by doing that, you're also, you know, leading by example, which is absolutely important, you know, whatever managerial role you're on. As you can see, you know, I try to live the dream. <laughs> you know, not bad for a 40 year old. Um, get down with the kids. You know, I think this is really important because you know you need to stay in touch too. You know, there can't be this gap. You know, yes, you can read the reports and the white papers on fashion and you know zeitgeist trends and whatever, but you're working with people. You need to make some connections and report. You know, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. Do you walk in with a mega death T-shirt on? It's up to you. But somewhere, somehow. You need to connect with your younger people because they're relying on you for leadership. So however you do it, it's really important. I'll leave it to you. Oh, that's it. I'm going to show a bit of work now, just to liven things up a bit. And this is a really interesting example. This is some work we've done for Nissan uh, from Europe, but this is a particular job for their premium brand, which has been launched. In Europe called Infinity. It's already in the US, it's in uh, Japan as well, and they wanted to launch uh, the, the, the brand in uh, Europe, but there are no vehicles, there are no showrooms, you know, they haven't got the dealership network sorted. Because we specialise in CRM, we decided that we would take the Nissan CRM model and run it across this new brand so that we can start to catch people's you know, interests, name and address, details, sort of put them on, you know, the life cycle of the CRM right up to purchase and beyond. So what we what we did because of the issues with the car, we created a website that gave you a driving car experience and selection experience. So you can sort of get as close as you could to a tactile experience on the car. So have a look at this. And it's the wrong link. <laughs> okay, something's gone wrong there. Okay, well, we'll move on because we have to be creative in these presentations. <laughs> right, this is a job I did. Um, I tell you what, it will be out of seat, so what we'll do is we'll come back to that. Right, go about that. And I'm a creative director. You know, you're the, the young people we work with have got this lovely naivety, you know, they haven't got this experience, but they've got this enthusiasm for creativity and all the other things that are around them. And, you know, that is going to deliver good, you know, every now and again. But, ha having said that, <coughs> it needs managing. So, you have to help that on with some knowledge. But we really want the older creators to recognise that you need to embrace that knowledge. Because otherwise, you're just bursting the bubble every single time it comes up, and you're just, you know, pushing thoughts down. So I say, you know, when you see it there, really bring it out, and then let it settle, and then gently push it on a bit, so that actually, you know, perhaps, you know, we might need to do this with our idea, or great idea, but let's keep that for something else. If you kill ideas stone dead, you'll actually kill people's ability to come up with ideas in the first place. So we really want to keep that open channel so people feel great about their work. And passing on knowledge, you know, you've got the experience and the legacy, you know what's working, what doesn't work, but sometimes you have to do the JFDIs and say, you've just got to get this one done. But there are other times where you say, perhaps it could be better like this, or have you considered that? But doing all this, you know, that's rubbish, do this, do that. I don't think it helps anyone. I wouldn't like to be able to see you in with that, so and I'm sure you wouldn't survive. Now, what I'm going to do is 
I really do want to show you this work. I'm concerned it's not there. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, So imagine when they get down to that, when we're doing some DM or some emails, you now we're going to be talking to them in a very you know, personalised way. What happens when he sends a brochure? What happens when he so sends a brochure, uh, send a so configuration to the dealer? Then what happens? I don't think they get the brochure. I've worked on this project specifically, but I think most of it is email. Okay. When you send marks to the guy, that means. Yeah, when you send Mark Supercar, no, no, not send Mark Supercar to your friend. Hmm. When it says request a brochure or yeah, the yeah. links was yeah. No, you, you save it and it's all it's all electronic. Yeah, they they cut out the paper. Okay. When you go to the dealership, <coughs> when you go to buy your car, you yeah. have to go to the dealership. Yeah. 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 Walk around your car and see your car. Oh, okay. With all those uh, arrows that you were making. Yes, it's a virtual car. Getting towards the end now. Um, I think this is this has always been an important one for me. Give credit where you know um, it's, it's not. Often, you know, if you've got a young creative team that you know got a brilliant idea and the client loves it, you know they need to get the credit for it. And conversely. If you've got a client that uh, comes up with a good idea or an addition to an idea, they need to be credited too. And this is what happened on this next job. This is a piece of work we've done for the RAF. Um, as you know, you know, there's a big battle going on in Afghanistan. And the RAF regiments, which are just men only, soldier units, are permanently based there. And the, uh, and this piece was designed to recruit 17 to 20 year old men um, in certain areas of the UK where there was low employment at um, sort of like field days, like exhibition days, open air, so they've got tanks on display, they've got uh, 
you know, uh, exhibition panels, so you can go and talk to people from the regiment, pick up goodie bags, that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, this is advertised in the press, and it's also direct mail. So we've got a list of people that are that particular age, and we would mail these people. Now, the creative, because we want these people to think about, you know, a bit of engagement, what we've done here is uh, we send them a mail pad, and it says there, contents, individual protection equipment for or emergency water carrier. And then when you open the envelope, on the front of the mail pack, tipped on, is a condom. Okay? It's, not, it's not out of its packet, I hate to write it, it's just there for effect. And that there says, apply to weapons when on manoeuvres. Place in sock and fill with water to create emergency carrier. So we use the slight, you know, there's a gag there for, these, for the age group we're talking to so that we can engage with them at their level. But the reality is that that condom is used in the field for a multitude of reasons. It's put over guns to stop sand going in. It's used by paramedics to put over arm wounds and leg wounds to keep the dust out. There's all sorts of things they use it for. But the, the point I want to make here, we started this idea with bubble wrap. Bubble wrap, because they use bubble wrap in the army as well, and they use it for coverts and they can check if the bubbles are pops if someone steps on them. They use it for wrapping up and keeping people warm and at, the, at trauma shop, etc. And we presented this to the client, and the client simply said, you know, this would be so much better if this was a combo. And I thought, we'll take that, that's fantastic. You know, I wasn't proud. You know, if that's me being responsible and a, and a business person, and that, that has since won an award, that's won a Connect Award for back-end data because the, the data was very sophisticated how they could measure it. But I say, you know, that's just a slightly convoluted uh, example of, about credit. You know, credit can be, it needs to be distributed well, you know, well around the business. The ultimate lesson, what could that be? <laughs> <laughs> Together, you can all win awards. If you do all this prop, you know, I'm not saying, you know, they're on a salary, but, you know, they're in their first job. They're doing another portfolio. Yeah. It's awards. They love awards. They really want the kudos and the, you know, work in their book that they can show to other employers, look what I've done while I've been here. So make them gain for the employment again. But as creative directors, I like awards too. I'm sure we all do, but the people that are won them. And there's a whole host of awards out there. So what I'd say is, you know, really perhaps, you know, on your briefs, when you're writing your briefs, account managers, and as creatives, you know, look for those briefs, you know. Which one? Should we try and win an award with this brief? What's stopping us, you know? Let's find out what those awards are, you know. There's probably a few on the wall that you might recognise. But perhaps we should stretch it out a bit more. You know, internationally, you could... You can enter a fab award. <coughs> there's, there's um, what is it, F, uh, Fred Nuff, Epica, there's all sorts of stuff that are out there. You know, should instill this feeling of, you know, we want to win awards in our creative department. Not just for us, but for our business and for our clients. It's what gets good PR and it's often what gets more work. But Mark, like some clients, they say we don't look for our agencies who only look always for our awards. No? This is yeah. the opposite thinking. You, you yeah. find it in the markets. Uh, we, we so find, what's, what about it? We find some, when, when agencies often come, sorry, when businesses come to uh, us, TMW, in the UK, awards have been a factor. You know, we, 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 you know, clearly it wouldn't just be awards. You know, clients don't just want to win awards. You know, they, they've got products to sell. But the awards... Uh, underlying creativity, it's that simple. And the other thing, for things like the DMA Awards, which are, as you know, based on strategy, results, and creativity, they're, they're another way of underlining the other two key areas of, you know, what we're in business, which is, did it work, did it get response, did it sell units, sell products, okay? So, you know, we should all be working to that, because it's what keeps your young creatives fresh, and your other creatives interested. One more last piece of work, and then we're sort of more or less on the, on the way. This is a piece of work that we've done for Guinness 
which is, uh, we're doing a lot more digital work now. And this is um, we, on, uh, on people on the CRM program for Guinness. We don't just send them vouchers and stuff like that. It's all about advocacy for the brand, loving the brand. And we want them to feel that, you know, when they go, when they think about Guinness, they think, I really, you know, I love Guinness. And it's not just me that loves it. I want my friends to share and enjoy that, that love for Guinness as well. And it's a social, um, you know, product. It's a, it's a bit. So we do a, uh, a mailing for a birthday mailing. Uh, where we uh, send people, traditionally it was always sent as a card, so we'd send them a card at their birthday and say, you know, have a, have a beer on us, you know, happy birthday. But we're getting more sophisticated now and we're using online uh, interactive media to achieve that. And I don't know if there's probably not that many people in the room that remember Phil Rhodes, probably a few that might know him from Pakistan, uh, but you'll know him, Arno might know him. In Paris and uh, went to Pakistan for a trip. He was a young creator, he was a graduate that joined us six years ago um, on a training uh, graduate scheme. He's now just been appointed at TMW. He's left and come back a creative director. And he worked on this project with other young creatives. So I think this is a lovely example of how you know young and old have worked together to create not just one award winner, it's won three times, it won twice last year. And it's just one the DMA Grand Prix uh, for this year. So let's have a look. The name he says is personalised for personal safety. Ah, Nick! I am proud to be seeing you here today. And look out. I'm going to fight for you, but poor and ready for it. Happy birthday. <laughs> sure. I'm forgetting yourself. I can't get your point through the screen there. What I can do is shall we say encourage those no good mix of yours to write a point later. Just give me their details and where you think they're going for the points. Hello there. I just thought I'd remind you that a certain someone we both know is celebrating a birthday. A 32nd birthday, to be precise. Now, surely that deserves a point. And I think you ought to be buying it. I've written down the name of the pub. And I expect you to be that nice. I'll be watching you. <laughs> so the pub, the pub is also personal. to you know get the best out of them and manage them in the early days of their career and not leave them with this uh, impression that you know they're not worthy that's just not right so for me here ended the lesson thank you very much um, as you know we are 
in the network and at our events to learn and to learn from the boulders. Um, if there's any question or comment, just say it now because we are now at the closing moment of our event in Goa. Is there any question or comment to Mark? No? Thank you. They made this event unforgettable. Last year, I remember I said in Istanbul, this is the best event, the best forum we ever had. It won't be able to be better. I take my words back. Uh, you proved that this event was the absolute optimum, best, excellent, super event ever. It is the best event ever. But, don't go. From the wet lowlands, uh, I brought you some presents, and if you hang it at home or in your office, I hope you all will think about us and the nice time we had here. I, I did it very ugly, you know, because I had to get into it to know which package was for whom. <laughs> <laughs> so I already attracted power. But uh, I thank you very much for all the nice work. at the Interdirect Central Coordination Center. We both do a lot of, um, let's say, contacts and advice to each other to make the network as good as it could be. I thank Brian very much. I, I did the same thing because I didn't know the difference. Thank you very much, Brian. It was a great job.
another dessert. Yeah. It's a special yeah. Dancing and whatever he's been at the back of the scenes, just ensuring that everybody's happy and everybody's comfortable. So I think you're going to take it to bow. Next guy will be our new chairman from January 1st. And I must say, and I say it from the bottom of my heart, we had a wonderful time the last three years. Um, yes, we have. Uh, Hans Christian has been very active. He was very much inspiring and also critical, which he should be. And uh, on behalf of all members, I would like to thank you for these two years, but we expect that you will be, you stay as active as you were these two years, not being a chairman, but doing all the rest of the work. And, <laughs> and to give you a symbolic present, this is a uh, nice culture, and it's, uh, the title is Supporting. And that is what you did. Thank, Thank you very much. That is extremely nice, Peter. Thank you. Okay. But before he looks in detail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. That's probably the simplest way. <laughs> I'll send you a new play. Thank you very much. How's it going? I must say, thank you to you all. It's been a pleasure. Only a pleasure. Well, it's very nice to work for this group, and I would have liked to continue if I could, but now there's someone else taking over. But I will stay in the background, and I will remain active, and thank you for electing me four years ago. Thank you. Thank you.